Hi and welcome to Mad Comfort Jewelry. In this video I want to briefly touch on another set of tools that are available to you uh, that lie under the uh, option of surface milling. In particular both planar finishing and pocketing. These are available in your 4 and 5 axis tabs under surface milling section. So here is our planar finishing and here is our pencil tracing. To demonstrate what these two do, I will present you with this simple model on a support that has a little bit of a bend to it. So, as before, you select our model, select your tool bit, and now, unlike before where we were selecting boundary curves or some other artificial boundaries, we simply go to our surface milling area and choose planar finishing, specifying a few of the options that are by now familiar to us, such as step over size, toolpath joining, options, and so on and so forth. So, to make this calculation quicker, we'll choose a large step over size, we'll leave the angle limit as is, and we'll proceed with the rest of the options. Set a default. So, what surface milling does is that it takes your entire selected model and simply processes it, assuming that you want everything cut, everything cut from the current seaplane that is. So, as you can see, we have started at the very edge of our support and have gone all the way to the very edge of our model. So, if we go back to our surface milling options and examine them in detail, you can see that in addition to step over size, we have an angle limit. This will determine when MADCAM will stop trying to cut any further and basically round out its path and continue on its way. If we set this angle to zero, we will waterfall off of our model and down below, as you will see briefly. This may or may not be a useful option. I generally find it to be quite difficult to work like this uh, unless you're willing to add extra planes to prevent too much uh, time being spent cutting these long entryways. Generally speaking, you're, you're better off specifying some sort of an angle beyond which you do not want a mad cam to, to, to cut. As before, you can also specify an angle of toolpath approach, uh, or rather cutting, either X or Y, or you can specify an arbitrary angle, such as 30 degrees. And you will see that it will calculate at your specified angle. So there you are, that's your 30 degree angle processing. This may be useful for some patterns or designs. And you can also keep in mind that if you'd like to prevent MADCAM from cutting everything this way, for example, let's just say you want to cut this squashed sphere, you can always just select this surface or poly surface and then apply your surface milling here with your preferred option set and it will cut just this leaving all the other areas alone the important part here is to avoid any uh, angles that are too sharp that might cause that waterfalling effect we saw a second time when we specified no limit on the angles and also avoid including any parts of the model that you do not wish to have cut. So for example 
if we do not want our support to be cut as a, a part of this operation, simply exclude it from the selection when you're first making a selection for poly surfaces or surfaces or meshes in MADCAM. That will prevent it from being processed in one go. So that's our planar finishing. Another useful surface milling technique is pencil tracing. And it is used to outline your sharp angles on the model to make sure that the boundaries, these sharp angles, are clean and crisp on, on the wax. This is accomplished automatically as well as same fashion as your planar finishing. Basically anything that's within your selected geometry and falls within the appropriate seaplane will be processed. As before you go to your surface milling area, choose pencil tracing, specify your options or you can leave them at default and click OK. If you're using a tapered bit to cut letters or engravings that need to be vertical, this would be a good point to switch to a nice straight flat bit and then run this operation using that. Because what it will do is it will follow all these outlines and correct those slightly curved walls that are left by your tapered bit and make sure that they are now straight. So, if we preview this operation, or rather view the simulation, you could see that the bit will follow all of these boundaries and clean up anything that needs to be cleaned up around them. Just like with the other surface milling technique, you do not control which areas the bit goes to, as that's handled by MADCAM. So both makes it easier for you and in some ways more difficult to control. So in conclusion, surface milling techniques can be a handy way of covering pretty large areas of your model in a fairly automatic fashion. Although the downside, of course, is you don't get to have as fine-tuned control as you would with perhaps curve milling or some of the drive surface milling techniques that we will see later on. Thanks for watching.